So it was a regular Monday morning, and I was getting ready to head to work. And I had my English breakfast tea in one hand, and I had my sandwich in the other. And I had my everything packed, my backpack was packed, it was in the passenger seat, and I headed off to work. And at the time, I worked about 20 minutes from where I was going to my office, which was actually a stadium at the time. And as I was about three-fourths of the way there, I realized, oh no, I forgot my, my badge to stand in. And where I worked, it was pretty high security. And so I knew this might infuse a little bit of a problem by the time I got there. And so I was almost there about pulling, I was pulling into the driveway. And it's really cool, they have a security setup. So right when you pull in, they actually make you stop your car. They take the little mirror thing and they go around your whole car to make sure you're not trying to sneak anything in. And then they have the cutest little dog run around your car, working really hard to make sure, again, you're not sneaking anything in. And the officers are like, okay, great, Miss Huseman, you're good, have a good day. I'm like, thanks, Whew, made it through. Didn't have to show my badge yet. Pull in, then I go find my parking spot, the same spot that I parked in for the last three years. Pull in, get my stuff together, grab my backpack, and I head to the door. And this is the door that I know I'm going to need to stand in on. And I've never forgotten my badge before. So I go up to the door and I'm kind of freaking out. My heart's racing, my palms are sweating. I'm like, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna get into this? And so little did I know, there's actually a button that says press here for help. So I'm like, okay, great, we're good. Somebody's gonna help me. Somebody I can't even see is gonna help me get into this building. So I walk up, push the button, and wait for what feels like an eternity, but it was probably about 10 to 15 seconds. And all of a sudden, loud and clear as day, I hear a voice come on and it says, who are you? And what are you doing here? And I froze, not really knowing what to expect. I didn't really know what they were gonna say. Maybe potentially thought it was gonna be a friendly voice. Come on, good morning, how are you? I don't know, I didn't know what to expect, but that's what I got. So if you know me, I'm not one to be shy on words or be speechless or not have a response, but in that moment, I didn't have a response. And so as I'm floundering up in my head, trying to figure out what am I gonna say, the voice comes on again, hello? Who are you and what are you doing here? So after I finally get my bearings together, I'm finally like, oh, oh, sorry. Uh, I'm Hannah Huseman. I'm a mental performance coach. I, I, I've worked here for three years and I'm here to do my job. And I'm so sorry, I left my badge at home this morning. And I'm still like shaking and I'm like, I didn't know what to say, I didn't know what to do. And about 15 seconds after that, I hear the little click, meaning the door had been unlocked. And so I was like, thank you so much, and ran into the door as fast as I possibly could. Now, in that moment, I don't think the intentions of whoever was on the other side of that microphone was to make me feel like I didn't belong, but unfortunately, that's exactly how I felt. I felt like I wasn't supported, I felt like I wasn't welcomed, and I 100% felt like I wasn't in the right place. But the reality of it was, I was. I was in the right place. I was in the place where I'd been working for three years. So often these moments happen when you go to a workplace and you're someone who's not the norm, right? These things happen a lot more often than what we would like for them to actually happen. And so I'm trying to figure out what do we do about it? So hi everyone, I'm so glad you're here today. My name's Hannah Huseman and I've spent the last 10 years studying sport performance psychology and I've spent the last eight years working in professional baseball, getting to work with elite level athletes, coaches and staff members on how their mind works for them and not against them. So naturally, I wanna take the same approach to this so-called issue, right? How do we support and empower and help those succeed in a world where they aren't the norm, where they're the minority, where they're the anomaly, or they're just plain different? And so that's what I wanna talk about today. I wanna to talk about three ways to succeed when you aren't the norm. That's what we're gonna talk about today. So let's dive in. Number one, know thyself. The first thing you can do when it comes to being successful in a workplace when you aren't the norm is to know thyself. You have to gather information. You have to understand yourself. You have to know what are your thoughts, what are your behaviors, and what are your characteristics? And how do they impact you? And how do they impact those around you? Having a base level of self-awareness is the foundation to any skill set that you will ever try to achieve because you can't grow if you don't know. If you don't know what's going on up here, if you don't know what's going on in here, if you don't know what's going on with you in general, it's gonna be really hard to do anything about that, to make an adjustment for the better, or to highlight your strengths. So we have to spend time getting to know ourselves. So dive in, figure out who are you, practice journaling, 
Talk to a mentor that you trust. Get feedback from somebody that you really believe in and will tell you the truth about what's going on. Right? Spend alone time with yourself. Figure out what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are your biases? And what are your breaking points? Because the reality of it is, if you go into a world where you aren't the norm and you don't have the answers to these questions, you're going to be lost, you're going to be confused, you're going to be frustrated, and when those storms hit, because they're going to hit, you're going to have no foundation, no fundamentals to, stick, to lean back on, to anchor you. But if you do know these, if you know the answers to these questions, and you know yourself inside and out, you're going to have clarity, you're going to have joy, and you're going to feel empowered more than you've ever felt empowered before. Right? People say all the time, hey, just be yourself. Just be true to you. Just go be you. But the reality of it is, you can't be you if you don't know you. You can't be you if you don't know you. So number one, the best thing we can do is know thyself. Now, once you have a better understanding of who you are and what you're all about, then the second step is to own thyself. So it's one thing to understand who you are genuinely and have that deep, better understanding, but then it's a whole other thing to actually believe in it and buy into it and have conviction in it. But that's part two. You have to own thyself. Because have you ever been around somebody who doesn't feel very confident about their abilities? And how does that make you feel about your confidence in their abilities? Typically probably not very good, right? Why would anyone have confidence in you if you don't have confidence in you? So it's one thing to understand thyself, it's a whole other thing to own thyself. The good, the bad, the ugly, right? If I know who I am, I know what my strengths are. So when you come tell me, I know. And I also know what, what my weaknesses are. So when you come and tell me I need to work on something, I know. And I'm working on those two. So it's one thing to know thyself, it's another thing to own thyself. But why is this so difficult? This is difficult because we're not exactly, let's say, the nicest people when it comes to how we message ourselves. Right? Anybody in the room relate to that? We're not exactly the nicest when it comes to how we talk to ourselves. But that's because we're all human beings, and it's very normal. We tend to notice the negative a whole lot more quicker than we notice the positive. And we tend to dwell on the negative a whole lot longer than we dwell on the positive. And it actually has a name. It's called the natural negativity bias. And we all have it, right? It's because our brain was created to keep us alive, to survive, not to thrive. So our brain is telling you, hey, beware. There's bad, there's dangerous, there's scary, there's life-threatening things going on over here. Where on the other side, there's cool, calm, collected, happy times over here. But your brain doesn't notice that first. It notices the negative, the scary, and the bad. And when we show up to work, when we're not the norm, Maybe we don't have life-threatening things coming at us, but we do have potentially career-threatening things coming at us, or ego-threatening things, or reputation-threatening things. And those could be things like failure, making a mistake, um, relax, not being able to relax when people are all relaxed around you, right? We all have those moments, and we need to be able to figure out how to handle that when it comes into our brain. So a saying I like to say is stop listening to yourself and start talking to yourself. Because if we naturally listen to that negative biasy all the time, we're just gonna beat ourselves up over and over and over and over again. Instead of having the ability to stop, reframe, create awareness around what we're saying to ourselves, and then turn it into something helpful. Let's talk about an example. Let's say you and your best friend are working together. You're actually coworkers, okay? And you get to work with your best friend. So congratulations, you're working with your best friend. And let's say they have a presentation today, and they actually do really bad on their presentation. Okay, they, they don't perform well, it's not good, everybody's kind of, oh, I don't know how this is going. And they come up to you afterwards and they're like, hey, how'd I do? And you're like, uh, that was the worst thing I've ever seen in my whole life. You were horrible. Like, not kidding, you embarrassed me. I don't even know if I want to be standing around you or near you or next to you. You don't even, you probably shouldn't even be wearing the shirt. Seriously, like, can you stand like 10 feet away from me? Right? We're all laughing because we would probably never say that, even to our closest friend or our best friend, right? But would you say that to yourself? Would you say it to yourself after a presentation when it didn't go so well? Yeah, we would. And part of that is because we hold ourselves to a really high standard, and that's a really good thing. But another part of it we have to be careful about is, is what we're saying to ourselves helping us or hurting us? 
So we all know what the golden rule of life is, right? The golden rule, do unto others as you would want done unto you. But do we know what the platinum rule of life is? You're not supposed to, I made it up. <laughs> the platinum rule of life is talk to yourself the way you would talk to someone else. More importantly, talk to, self, talk to yourself the way you would talk to a best friend. So let's say, let's replay that whole scenario, right? Your best friend still has a really bad presentation and they come up to you afterwards and they're like, hey, how did I do? What are you actually gonna say to them? You're gonna say, hey, you know what? It wasn't your best, but that's okay. You can figure it out, you can make adjustments. I'll support you, we can get more support, we can get more feedback, you know you're better than that. We can do this, you can do this, I believe in you. Could you imagine if you talk to yourself that way? Could you imagine if you talk to yourself that way and how much more productive you would be? So again, it's not always easy because it's not always going to be perfect. You're not always going to be perfect. You're not gonna be able to make everybody happy. You're not gonna be everyone's cup of tea, especially in, when you're in a world where you're not the norm. But you better make sure you're your own cup of tea. You better make sure you're your own cup of tea. And you do this by understanding who you are. If you know who you are, if you like who you are, and you own who you are, nothing else is gonna matter. Because people are gonna make assumptions of you. People are gonna talk about you. Some of them may be right, some of them may be wrong. But if you know who you are, and you like the cup of tea that you are, then nothing else matters. So it's one thing to know thyself. Second step, own thyself. And the last thing we're gonna talk about today is prepare thyself. Prepare thyself. So you get this amazing opportunity. You're breaking barriers, you're breaking ceilings. You're in a world where there's not a lot of people doing what you're doing, or there's not a lot of people who look like you doing what you're doing, whether it's right now or whether it's ever, right? And while that may be glamorous and glitzy on the outside, we know on the inside it's full of trials and challenges and things that you're gonna to have to deal with. So the worst thing you can do when you get in this opportunity is walk in thinking, oh, it's gonna be all sunshines and rainbows. I don't wanna burst your bubble, but it's not. It's gonna have amazing moments, but it's also going to have very hard moments. And it's something you have to be prepared for. Because when a challenge hits, you really only respond to a challenge in one of two ways. You either hit the panic button, or you hit the reset button. Okay, you either hit the panic button, or you hit the reset button. And the reality of it is, the only difference between hitting those two buttons is how prepared you are. Think about it. If you're prepared and a challenge arises, I know what I'm gonna do. I know how I'm gonna handle it. I gather my belongings, I get my thoughts together, I respond the way I wanna respond, and I keep moving forward. Great, I hit the reset button. If a challenge happens and you aren't prepared for it, all of a sudden, you're all over the place, you don't know which way is up, you're freaking out, we're panicking, and next thing you know, you send yourself into a downward spiral. Potentially making the challenge that you're faced with even worse than what it actually is, simply because you weren't prepared. Now, I don't want this thought to scare us into, well, how are we supposed to prepare for all the unknowns? Or how are we supposed to come up with all the different challenges we're gonna be possibly faced with? Because we can't. We can't think about every single challenge you're gonna be faced with. But we, we, what we can do is we can prepare for it. So don't fear the unknown, let's prepare for it. There are challenges that I was faced with when working in Major League Baseball, where the very first internship I ever had, I showed up, and they had never had a woman on field before. And I get there, and do you think they had any women's clothing ready to go? No. And that's okay, that was a challenge I knew for sure was gonna happen, and I was prepared for that. Now the challenge when I showed up to work that day, and the person on the other side of the security camera, when they said, who are you and what are you doing here, was I ready for that? Not so much. So if you wanna help yourself, if you wanna be the best you can be and succeed in a world where you're not the norm, you have to prepare yourself for any and every challenge that could potentially come your way. So back to the original story of who are you and what are you doing here? When you work in a world where you aren't the norm, you're gonna get this question a lot. Sometimes you're gonna get it from people who have really good intentions and they're like, hey, who are you and what are you doing here? What are you up to? And it's cool, you can have a good conversation. Sometimes you're gonna get it from people who don't have the best intentions. And they're gonna be like, who are you? What are you doing here? Right, I remember one time I was sitting at a, a minor league game and someone came up to me and was like, hey, which one's your boyfriend? And I was like, mm, no, no, I'm here to work, right? But again, kind of trying to figure out who are you and what are you doing here? And then the last thing where this could come from is it can actually come from inside. You can start to ask yourself, who am I? And what the heck do I think I'm doing here? 
right? Why did I sign up for this uphill battle, this constant challenge and tribulations that maybe other people around me don't have to deal with? But when it comes down to it, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where those questions come from. If you know thyself, if you own thyself, and if you prepare thyself, no one can make you feel like you don't belong. Because you 100% do belong, and you're here to make an impact. Thank you.